Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining me. And it is fall here, and we are making lots of sourdough bread. And it's been a really fun time for me because um, in one of my previous um, our blog articles, I showed people how to make sourdough bread into a pumpkin and how it looks just exactly like a pumpkin. It's super easy and it's super fun and people are all making it. And um, I love sourdough bread, especially in the fall. So I, I've got some new recipes coming out um, in my next ebook. And I want to uh, share with you all these tips I have on how to make sourdough bread because there's a lot of... Um, confusion about things sometimes. It's really actually a very easy cultured food to make. However, you kind of have to understand what's happening in order to make it easy for yourself. Because if you don't understand the process, it becomes hard because you're not understanding what you're supposed to do, how it's supposed to work. So I have a lot of tips and I have a lot of questions people have asked me throughout the years and I'm going to go through all of them. And I'm also going to link this article to the blog article so you can read it too. So, cause it's a lot of information, um, but you'll be able to look at it and read it and find the thing that, that you most need. So the secret to a good sourdough bread is the bubbly sourdough starter. And I have a life starter that I sell myself. I have a dehydrated starter and you can get a starter from a friend. You can get it from other companies, but they all pretty much work the same way. And to make a really bubbly sourdough starter, you must feed it a ratio of one to one to one. So what that means is you take a half a cup of sourdough starter, and you could even take a fourth a cup of sourdough starter, and that's still fine. Um, a fourth to a half a cup of st sourdough starter, then you give it a half a cup of flour and a half a cup of water. Um, you can make more starter than this if you want to. You can feed it more, um, but always keep the ratio pretty close to this one where you don't give it too much starter to the amount of flour and water, and you'll have a really thick sourdough starter. And the reason being is that the starter is going to eat all of the food, the flour and the water. It's going to eat all that. If you give it too much starter, then you're going to run, it's going to run out of food. It's not going to be as bubbly. So I always feed my starter the night before, at least four to eight hours before making my bread. And that all depends on the temperature in your home. The warmer it is, if it's 75 or warmer, the sooner it will be bubbly, maybe four hours. And the colder it is, the cooler it will take maybe six hours. But it really just depends. You have to watch it because your home um, is going to be different. And the thing is, the more you make sourdough bread, the more wild yeast you get. So you starter gets stronger and stronger and stronger after making it, especially for me, for so many years. So once your starter begins to rise in the jar and starts to get bubbles on the tops and the sides, it's ready to go. And you can also drop a little bit in a bowl of water and it'll float. And usually that tells you it's ready, but sometimes it doesn't float and it's still ready. So it's kind of a, it's not a foolproof method, but it is one that really uh, can help you to see how your starter is doing. Um, but just the bubbles, that's what really counts. If you have a lot of bubbles on top and a bubbles on the side, then you know that your starter is active and ready to go. So make sure you feed your starter at least once a week if you've been keeping it in the fridge. So what I do is I make bread once a week, sometimes twice a week, just depending on what my week is like. And I always feed it um, some starter once a week because I make bread every week. So, But if you don't make bread every week, you need to feed it. You know, and what you do is you take your starter out of the fridge, and I discard some of the starter. And I have recipes to use your discarded sourdough starter so you don't have to throw it away. And I'll link that in the description below too. And then you just feed it a half a cup of flour and a half a cup of water and stir it up and then stick it back in the fridge. Just make sure you do that once a week. That keeps your starter really healthy and active. And I like to keep my um, dough on the mo moister side, add less flour, and that makes it rise higher and you get a bigger bubbles in it. In your sourdough bread, it has a lighter taste and, you know, has the big holes that people love in sourdough bread. And it's also important to use a flour with a high protein content as this allows for the rising of the sourdough. And I'm gonna talk more about that in, I've got like a bunch of FAQs here I'm gonna go over, but I'm gonna talk more about that later on in this broadcast. So, um, cause it helps you to calculate how much protein your flour has, because the higher the protein content, the, the better your bread will rise. Okay, number one. These are questions I get all the time and I'm gonna go through them one by one. And I'm also gonna link this so you can read it too. 
Number one, are the bacteria and sourdough bread killed when you bake the bread? Anytime you heat any kind of food or bacteria above 115 degrees, you kill the probiotic beneficial organisms. Um, and there has been much speculation and research that says the internal parts of the sourdough bread don't get hot enough to kill all of the bacteria. So the transformation of the bread has already taken place during the rising phase. So you've bro um, broken down the phylates and the enzyme inhibitors and a lot of the gluten gets more relaxed and it unlocks the nutrients and vitamins and minerals that become accessible through fermentation. Now, if you don't ferment your bread, make sourdough bread or sprout your grains and use sprouted flour, then you're not unlocking those minerals and nutrients. And that's really important. Um, and that's what happens during the process of fermentation. But some people say the center of the bread still contains beneficial bacteria, but I don't know. You'll have to test your bread to see if it's 115 degrees or higher in the middle of it. Okay. Number two, my starter is bubbly, but not rising. Can I use it? Your starter must be rising even just a little bit in the jar, and that's how you'll know it's ready to use. It doesn't have to double, but it just needs to rise a little bit. And um, if it's not rising, you need to feed it again. Feed the starter again. Take out some of the starter and feed so you have a half a cup or less of the starter, and then give it a half a cup of flour and a half a cup of water. That's the secret. And um, get it to where it's really bubbly. And sometimes if it's been in the fridge a long time or it's more dormant, it will take a while for it to get really bubbly and really active. It usually takes a couple feedings. So um, if you really want to get a really big jump start on it, only use a fourth a cup of starter and then a half a cup of flour and a half a cup of water because the less starter you use, the more nutrients it has to eat, so the more bubbly it will be. And then you stir all that together, leave it on the counter for, you know, anywhere from 4 to 12 hours, depending on how warm or cool your kitchen is, and then feed it again until it's really bubbly, and then it will be ready to make bread. A sourdough starter is just kind of like a pet, guys. And if you have to feed it, make it strong, and then it will rise your bread, you know, much better. And you'll, you'll love how it works, but you got to take care of it. And um, I have a whole article on how to care for your sourdough starter, and I will link that too. Okay, question, is this question number three? Yeah. Why is my bread taking forever to rise? It is most likely that your sourdough starter is not active enough if your bread is taking a long time to rise. Temperatures can also slow this down. If it's really cold in your house, it makes the starter kind of sluggish. Um, let the starter sit on the counter and see if it will rise a little bit in the jar. It may just take longer, but if it's not rising, then your starter needs to be revived and fed a couple of times. So just like before, you feed it half a cup of flour, half a cup of water, using smaller amounts of starter, between a half and a fourth a cup of starter. I recommend a fourth a cup if it's struggling. It'll, it'll do better if you kind of flood it with uh, nutrients of extra flour and water. I hope that's making sense. Okay, let me explain it again. So if you have too much starter in your jar and then you give it flour and water and you don't have enough flour and water, it eats it really fast and then it kind of flattens out the starter and it's not as bubbly because it runs out of nutrients. So if you use less starter, say a fourth of a cup instead of half a cup, or you can use either one is fine, and then use it half a cup of flour, half a cup of water, you're going to flood it with food and then it's going to be more bubbly. That is really, really important. A lot of people don't want to throw out their extra starter. And you don't have to throw it out. I have recipes you can use um, with your discard sourdough starter. Um, you know, anything from cookies to muffins. And I've got a whole bunch of things like that. But you just want to make sure that you're not giving, maybe you don't have too much starter in your jar because it won't, it'll eat up all the food too fast. So, you know, it's it just takes a while for it to, get up to speed if it's kind of being sluggish. Okay, what is the brown liquid on top of my starter? Now that brown liquid, sometimes if your starter runs out of food, it's called the hooch. And it's the sign of a starving sourdough starter. It needs to be fed because it has consumed all the nutrients in the flour. So you can either pour the liquid off, that dark brown liquid, it doesn't look very good, but it's not harmful in any way. And you can replace it with water or just mix the hooch back into the starter. It doesn't matter either way. But you need fresh flour and more water because that means your starter is super hungry. Um, your starter may go flat in the summertime after being bubbly only a few hours. That's because it's warm. And the yeast virtually runs out of food. And it's fed on carbohydrates, so producing a lot of bubbles in the process. And then when it runs out, it kind of has nothing left to feed on, so it goes flat. 
And that's why we feed or refresh our starter by giving it more flour and water to keep it bubbly. And that is, you know, flour is food for your starter. Okay, next question. How often should I feed my sourdough to starter? Well, like I said before, you should feed it, um, if you've got it out on the counter, you should feed it twice a day, at least every eight hours, um, if it's on the counter. Um, I'd like to feed it more than that, but at least every eight hours. And if you're storing your sourdough starter in the refrigerator, you should feed it at least once a week, like I said in the first question. If you forget to feed it, take it out of the fridge and feed it once in the morning and once at night for a few days to revive it, if it's been in the fridge for a long time. And it should be ready and strong to use to rise your bread again. It just takes a couple feedings and it'll be fine. It's starters, sourdough stars are pretty hardy. They're pretty hard to kill and they get revived pretty fast. So don't give up on it too, too fast because you could probably revive it. Okay, types of flour that you need to use for your starter. I feed my starter um, a premium natural white all-purpose flour that's high in protein. And you can feed your starter whole wheat, which contains many minerals, but always, always look for a high protein content in your flour. Ideally, the, your flour should have 11 to 13% protein content to make the best bread with the highest rise. And you'll see things that say bread flour, and that's a high protein bread. But the flour we use has the highest protein unbleached white flour available, and I will link that in the description. And it has 13.33% protein content. And um, you can also use bread flour, like I said before, or a good quality unbleached white flour, whole wheat flour, or rye, which is wonderful too. But um, you need to use a flour that does not add chemicals or one that is bleached and processed. And otherwise you're getting chemicals and things that you otherwise can affect your starter and it can affect you too. So bread flour is what most, most bread makers use. And you can find that at almost every grocery store. And a high protein content makes the bread really rise higher. Now, whole wheat flour can have a high protein content, but it will make your bread more dense and will rise as high as white flour. Uh, white wheat flours work really, really good. Prairie gold wheat Montana is a good one to use. If you want to use mostly wheat flour, it's really good. Makes great bread, rises really well. But do not use sprouted flours to make sourdough bread. Um, the, process of breaks, the process of sprouting breaks down the grain, and then it doesn't work well for a sourdough culture, so don't use sprouted flours. Now, I have a calculation on how to find how much protein is in your flour. And I'm going to link this description too because you're going to want to go back and look at it. But if there are 4 grams of protein per 30 grams of flour, you need to multiply... 4 by the number 100, and then divide by 30. So most of the um, flour comp flours on the back of the package have 30 grams of flour um, and 4 grams of protein, or however much protein is on there. You just want to take, again, you need to multiply that number of protein by the number 100, and then you divide it um, by 30, which is below, which is the number of grams of flour. It's a little complicated, but it's not hard. So I'm going to leave this in the description. But that most of the time, if it's bread flour, you're fine. Um, but if you really want to look at your flour, you need to do that little calculation. It's a little bit of multiplication, but it's pretty easy. And you can look at the formula on the actual article. Okay, water and salt to use in sourdough bread. You can use almost any type of water to feed your starter. Um, I like filtered or purified water. works the best for me. And I've even used tap water and it was fine, but some bakers say that's not the best. Spring water with minerals is probably my preferred choice. I have spring water from a mountain here. And uh, fermentation loves minerals. And your body loves minerals. So it will help in the end um, if you get good minerals in your water. Uh, my two favorite salts to use is Celtic sea salt or Himalayan salt. Those are the ones I use the most in my bread. You can use any kind of salt, but those are my favorite because they have minerals. And that salt with minerals is so important and um, just for your body and for, you know, your bread. Fermentation loves it. So that's what I try to do, Some find some salt that has minerals in it. Um, you know, you, you need to feed your starter before you're baking, okay? So you always need to get your starter ready before you decide to make bread. So you always feed your culture 68 hours before you want it. Sometimes it's done in four hours. It just depends. You're going to have to watch it. See if it rises a little bit. If it's bubbly all over, it's ready to go. And I keep my sourdough culture in the refrigerator. I feed it religiously once a week, you know, with the ratio of half a cup of starter, half a cup of flour, half a cup of water. And you can use it and replenish it, stir it up, and place it in the fridge. It's 
really important not to use more starter than flour and water. Um, and the day I want to bake with it, I feed it, take it out of the fridge, let it warm up on the counter till it's nice and bubbly and rising a tiny bit in the jar. And, um, you know, it just depends on the temperature in your home. And some days it rises more quickly than others. It surprises me because some days the temperature will be the same, but it will rise more quickly. So um, I just recommend, you know, using it, you know, once it starts to rise and get bubbly, to use it within an hour or two before the rising starts to fall again. You'll get a better result if you do. It's okay if it does fall a little bit, but it does work the best if you catch it while it's super bubbly. Okay, so let's say you, you want to feed your starter without baking. Um, you've been busy and you don't want to bake that week. Just like I said before, just feed it once a week. Half a cup of starter, half a cup of flour, half a cup of water, not too much starter. S stir it all up, stick it in the fridge, and that'll last a week. Now, if you want to increase your starter, let's say you want to make three cups of starter uh, to make a couple loaves of bread. So get a cup of starter. If you don't have a cup of starter, uh, you can use three quarters of a cup of starter, even a half a cup of starter. Any of those will work, but give it one cup of flour and one cup of water, and you'll make three cups. Um, if you have one cup of starter. If, if not, give it a little bit more flour and water and you'll increase your starter till you have what you need. And it's pretty easy to do. So um, now, if you have too much starter, I have a lot of recipes on ways to use up your extra sourdough, waffles, pancakes. I have really good snickerdoodle cookies. And peppermint sourdough brownies are another one that I really like. I also do a lot of sourdough dumplings, and this time of year is really good on top of soups and stews. They're really good. But don't waste your sourdough starter. Put it to good use, and I've got a lot of recipes for that. Now, let's say you've neglected your starter. It's been in your fridge for a month or whatever. Um, you know, if it's been in there a long, long time, only use a fourth a cup of starter and then give it a half a cup of flour and a half a cup of water. So overwhelm it with food. Let it ferment for six to eight hours. See how it does. It should perk up and have lots of bubbles. And um, if it doesn't do, then do it again. Take out some of the starter, feed it again, half a cup of flour, half a cup of water, half a cup of starter, and just overwhelm it with food. And it should come back to life after a couple of feedings, maybe three at the most. So, and but don't use too much starter. That's one thing. Okay, that's what I'm going to keep saying because that's the number one thing people do that makes their starter sluggish is they start out with too much starter and then they feed it but they don't feed it enough flour and water because they have too much starter in there and then their bread doesn't rise okay now my sourdough bread is too sour or not sour enough so if your sourdough bread is too sour then you may be using a newly made starter like if you made your own starter at home which you can do which takes like a week and a half or something when i did that my starter was so sour nobody would eat my bread including me because new starters are very, very acidic and sour. And um, aged sourdough starters, ones that have been around for a long time, actually taste better and taste very, very mild. And um, my starter that I sell my store, it's over, well, I've been using it for 20 years, but it's probably over 100 years old. It has a much milder taste. But if you want more sour bread in your taste, more of a sour tart in it, and you, you need to use one of my recipes that uses more starter. I don't use a ton of starter in mine because I ferment it for a long period of time. But if you, if you want to make it more sour, use a cup of starter. And I have a recipe that has, my refrigerated sourdough bread has one of those that makes it super tart tasting. And um, that's one of the ways you can get that really sour twang. If you want us to use a recipe that has more um uses more starter in the recipe. So, and I will link that in the description below. So those are some of the things that I get a lot of questions about that I can help you, but check out the article too, because it has a lot of links in it too, that give you recipes and things that can really, really help you. And one of the greatest, I think it's one of the greatest things in my life that I really love is making bread. There is just nothing like making your own bread. When you take three ingredients, salt, water, and flour, and turn it into something really beautiful that your family loves, that tastes fantastic, you feel so proud of yourself. It's awesome. And people love it. And people eat my bread so fast that I hide my bread from some people because they'll eat it so fast and won't have any bread. So, and that's a real, 
that's a problem when I get company. If I have fresh bread on the counter, um, some of my company will eat the whole thing. So I always have a couple of loaves hanging around just in case everybody eats it all. But I have some new recipes coming out too that are really good that are specific for fall and for the holidays. And they're super cute and super fun. Check out my pumpkin sourdough that looks like a pumpkin. And you basically what you do is you just make my basic bread and I put some pumpkin seeds in it that are candied. And then I take a string and tie it around the bread, which is round, um, to section it off to make it look like a punk pumpkin and then bake it and it looks exactly like a pumpkin and put a cinnamon stick in the middle. It's the cutest thing you ever see. So anyway, um, check those out. Uh, have fun learning to make your bread. Bread is, is a completely different food when you make it yourselves because the process of fermentation changes everything. And many people who struggle with gluten allergies and uh, things like that, once the bread is fermented for long periods of time, they don't have those problems anymore. And uh, it just depends on how severe your allergy is. But, and if you do have allergies, I recommend my einkorn sourdough bread because einkorn um, doesn't have um, the protein in it that causes the food allergies. It's the most ancient wheat there is. And most everybody I know who's got severe gluten allergies thrives on einkorn sourdough bread. So I will link that in the description below too. But anyway, I hope you make some bread. If you have some trouble, shoot me an email and send me some pictures because I love those pictures of people's bread. So have a great week, guys, and we will see you next time.